Welcome back to Global with me, Matthew Amaro. Now, here's a question. When was the last time you sat down and just coloured in a picture? Well, it's becoming an increasingly popular activity amongst adults as a way to unwind and de-stress. It's claimed that in France, creative therapy books like these are outselling cookery books. Well, uh, joining me here in the studio is Richard Merritt, an illustrator who's been part of creating the British version of these books and the business psychologist Anna Krolik. Uh, plus, we have some of uh, our colleagues here in the studio putting their creative hats on. We'll see how they are getting on a little later in the programme. They are hard at work. So uh, let's start with uh, Anna and Richard. Thanks very much for coming in. Uh, I mean, Richard, I said there in the introduction, more popular than cookery books, really? A apparently so. So I hear in France, yes. I think that's where the trend has just taken off and it's just come to our shores and uh, it's going global, I presume. <laughs> and, I mean, you are the illustrator yeah. on these British versions. Just yeah. take me through. We've got a few here on the desk. What, what is it that you're trying to actually put together? Are these random? Are you deliberately doing them in the way that uh, you do? Is there a reason behind it? Um, they're kind of, uh, they're deliberate in a, in a sense that they're a lot more elaborate than a standard children's colouring book. So they're going to be a bit more advanced for an adult and a bit more appealing uh, to the adult market. So when uh, Michael O'Mara book uh, pitched the idea to me, I just thought it's a great idea to uh, re-engage adults with their creativity that you normally lose after becoming an adult. You know, uh, when you're a child, you're carefree and you're, you're doing it without thought. When you're an adult, you get your job, you get everything else in life you don't really con continue it, unless you're an artist, I suppose, like me. <laughs> Anna, therapeutically, why are things like this valuable, do you think? Are they valuable? I do think they are valuable, yes. Research shows that if you're colouring in particularly mandala-type shapes, so geometric patterns um, that are quite complex, it is actually really relaxing. Um, it seems to calm down so parts of So particular shapes, that's what I was asking, Richard, actually, whether it was random or uh, particular things actually helpful. Is it the simplicity of this, partly with the modern world, with everything bombarding us? Is that part of why well, it works? In terms of the, the pictures that work for colouring in for adults, it is the more complex ones that do work better. Um, but we do seem to be living in such a stressful environment um, at work, at home, all the economic pressures on us, um, stresses, you know, the doctors are seeing many more people with stress every day. Uh, and I know that you've actually done some of the ones that you've actually put together. And you talk about just almost like going into a zone, going into becoming autopilot. Absolutely. Is that the point that it's just ultimately a total distraction from everything else? It's a complete distraction. Uh, and I think when you do start to be involved in them, you, I mean, it's the same when I draw. It's, you don't think about anything else. I mean, you might have problems in life, you might have this, the other, you've got to pick up the kids, you've got to do this, that. It doesn't matter. When you're doing this, you've just got the book, a couple of colouring pens in front of you, your brain sort of switches off, and it's that moment sort of, a re of relaxation, and you're recharging, and you don't even realise it. Anna, we were hearing earlier uh, uh, just about creativity. Is the important thing in terms of the work that you do, creativity almost leads to something. It leads to communication of an area that perhaps is, is rather trapped. That's right, yes. Um, doing something creative gives us that space in our minds to be able to, to access parts that, of us that are unconscious. So we're able to to have space in our minds to think more creatively, to think laterally, to be able to solve problems, and also to relax. And this is just one prop that potentially you use others in the sort of work you do. What, what, what are the sort of people that you're helping? What, what do they say to you? Are they, I mean, are they skeptical when you first approach them and say, I suppose, if you colour this in, things would be a lot easier, you'd sort of relax? Um, some people are sceptical. I, I bring in um, visual art processes um, to help people so maybe things like collaging so if there's a, uh, a in the workplace if a team is um, working together and wants to work together better they might create something uh, maybe a sculpture or they they um, think about collaging if they're individuals um, and uh, uh, they don't even think about it while they're doing it but afterwards they can see um, something about what's meaningful let's continue to them. the conversation but let's uh, bring in my various colleagues who've been hard at it for the last few minutes just uh, colouring in and uh, what, what was it like? I mean, it was just a total random thing, you were actually asked to do it, so what did that feel like? 
Um, it was actually quite relaxing. I, 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 was it? I, well, I haven't done it for such a long time. I mean, there was a bit of concentration thinking, I've got to get in between the lines, it'd be very <laughs> embarrassing if I went over. But actually, it took a bit of concentration, but once I got into it, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a long time. Is that time. how it was for you as well? Uh, well it started off colouring in, but was handed modelling clay. And actually, a bit, it was a bit stressful. Uh, for me. Stressful. Yeah. Yeah, in the opposite direction. Stick to the colour in. <laughs> uh, Richard, you were talking about creativity. Yeah. The interesting thing is that, uh, I mean, you are doing a lot of the work. It's not entirely creative. You're, the, the person is just mm -hmm. colouring in, filling in. Yeah. Doesn't that work against creativity? Why, why aren't you doing everything? No, not at all, because I could uh, give you one of my images and you'll colour it in. I can give the same image to the lady there. She'll colour it in in a completely different way. So you'll have an individual piece of artwork at the end of it. So I just lay the foundations, if you like, and then it's up to you to create that piece of artwork in full colour. Uh, and Anna, if you were looking at any of uh, what has been done here, why don't you pass one over and... Uh, I mean, is there anything that you would sort of pull out in terms of, is it significant, the, the choice of colours that have been chosen, what they've done here? If you took a snapshot look at that, would you be able to read anything into that? Um, it looks very creative to me and um, very neat, yes. And um, this person seems to um, have covered the whole page, so sort of looking at the whole, the whole picture. What did you think? Very quickly. Uh, this, once I got into it, yeah, I did, um, I did start to relax. So I started worrying about the time it was going to take. <laughs> once I started getting into it, that all that disappeared and I just worried about colouring in. I think it is designed to take uh, hours, so uh, perhaps that's a, a good start. I'm going to take certainly one of these books home, not for me, but uh, those errant teenagers, I think a couple <laughs> of pages of this, and uh, that might work as a, a de-stressor. So, uh, well, look, thanks to you for trying it out. Thanks for the two of you coming in uh, and explaining it all to us. Uh, thanks very much. Well, plenty more here on Global in the next few minutes. Uh, we'll return to that breaking news on Ebola from America. Much more. Don't go away.